How do you describe your students? To what do you compare them? Are they plants needing water and sunshine? Or are they kindling needing your fire to ignite them from within? Obviously, whatever metaphor we use to think about our students will impact heavily on how it is that we try to reach each student in his or her own way. How would it change things, for example, if we thought about our students as medieval knights? Obviously, I don't mean to say that we should be working jousting and chivalry into our already packed curricula. Rather, I would like to focus on the medieval custom of throwing down the gauntlet. A gauntlet, for those who weren't raised on the tales of King Arthur and his round table, is a glove. This glove was a part of the knight's shining armor. In the days of knights and damsels, if one knight would throw down his gauntlet in front of another knight, he was challenging him to a duel. And if that second knight would pick up the gauntlet, he was accepting that challenge. I would like to demonstrate how this could fit into our modern day education through a story. I was working in a summer camp, and there was one camper in particular. Let's call him Dennis. This camper Dennis was quite a menace. Whatever we asked Dennis to do, it seemed he would do the opposite. If we asked him to go to activities, he would avoid them. If we told him he was docked and couldn't go to activities, he would go to activities and disrupt. We were nearing our wits end with what to do with Dennis. Finally, one day, one of the division heads had a great idea. He pulled Dennis out of his activity and he told him, Dennis, I don't know if you're able to do this, but you are now in charge of lunch. I don't want to hear any excuses. This is your responsibility. And you know what happened? Dennis became a man on a mission. Nothing came between Dennis and his lunch duties. And a funny thing happened in addition. Not only did Dennis begin to take his lunch duties seriously, he took all of camp very seriously. We challenged Dennis, told him that we didn't think he could do it, gave him adult responsibilities, and he responded in kind. He met those expectations and exceeded them. He began to behave like a responsible adult. We all have students like Dennis. Students who appear to be totally checked out of academics, not willing to listen, Oftentimes, these same students are totally locked into their athletics. For many of these students, what gets them going, what motivates them, is an inspiration, but a challenge, competition. We're faced with a problem, though, because we don't want to foster inter-class competition with this student trying to beat everybody else. However, throwing down the gauntlet can provide that ghost fighter for these students to compete against. This ghost fighter can become the doubts this ghost fighter can become the expectations that the student is trying to outrun and vanquish. It gives the student the opportunity to show that he is the knight in shining armor, that we know that he is. Now obviously the gauntlet though, while it could be used in this one hand to help motivate students who need a challenge and need competition, is equally effective when presented from a teacher who expresses openly the confidence that he has in a student. When I was in 12th grade, there was a teacher who would go over to certain students one-on-one -on -one, and tell them, I'm sorry, I can't let you graduate 12th grade unless you finish Shas Mishnayis. Now to some, this may seem like an overly high bar to set for 12th graders. However, for the students that he approached one-on-one, -on -one, expressing this confidence, it often served as the motivation and inspiration for them to meet those goals. I know I have one friend in particular who took countless hours, which otherwise would have been consecrated to the likes of Tony Hawk, John Madden, and Zelda, and instead dedicated them to Rebbe, Rebbe Shimon, and Rebbe Meir. This friend of mine finished all Shisha Sidre Mishnah before he graduated high school. And it was all because this teacher came to him and made this expectation. Very often as teachers, when we tell students, you're capable of better work, all the student hears is, this work is not good. However, when a teacher comes to a student and says, you're capable of better work, you're capable of doing X, Y, and Z, far from being seen as a criticism, it's seen as inspiring confidence. The student knows there is a teacher who believes that I can do X and that I can do Y and that I can do Z. For these students, the gauntlet, the challenge, is not coming from an adversary. It's coming rather from the wise and master knight, the knight telling his disciple, you have arrived. He's telling his disciple, I'm giving you this challenge now because now 
You have the skills and the capabilities to do it. For these students, the gauntlet is the turbo boost that they get on top of whatever they've learned and whatever skills they have to really be able to clinch it, to do that step which is a little bit above what we, they thought they could have possibly done otherwise. For these students, the gauntlet is just a pat on the back. So we've seen the gauntlet can be used in two different ways. It can come across as a glove slap for the students who need the competition, but for those students who need to be handled with kid gloves, it's a show of confidence. Like everything else in education, it's not one size fits all. Oh, take throwing down the gauntlet and apply it to all of your students. It needs to be applied in different ways for different students. And there are students still who neither of these will work for. However, as teachers, it's our job to put as many tools as we can in our toolbox, to expand our repertoire, to try to reach as many students as we can, to reach those students who are medieval knights, and to reach those students who are kindling, and to reach those students who are plants. Shlomo HaMelech tells us, Ein kol chadash hashemesh. There's nothing new under the sun. While I've always known this to be true, I never realized how true it was. I never would have believed that we could learn here in the 21st century, as modern educators, steps for how to inspire our students from 15th century medieval knights. But you never know where you'll learn a new tool.